Do you wanna know how to make your mixes super deep? This is how you create depth in a mix. Okay, so I have a stereo recorder right up on top of the camera, and so you can hear when I go off to this side, my voice moves as I move across the stereo spectrum. Now there's two things we need to talk about here. What actually happens to the sound the further you get away from the source. So as I back up, what is actually happening to my voice? Obviously it's getting quieter, but it's also getting more compressed with less low end and less top end. Now the important thing here is as I walk side to side when I'm close, my voice sounds like it's moving from side to side, but as I move backwards, it's gonna sound much less different. It's much more centered. And the further back I go, the more centered it's gonna become as I walk from side to side. The less of a variance there actually is going from side to side. So the important thing here is if things are this far apart, right close to you, it's gonna sound like they're very, very, very wide. And the further back you get, the less wide that same distance seems. And so you want to incorporate this into your mixes. How do you make things seem like they are actually far away? So let's take a look at how you actually realistically push something back in the mix. Okay, so there are four things that we need to do when we want to simulate something being farther away from us. The first thing that we need to do is EQ. We need to EQ it in a way that is like it would be if it was far away from us. The second thing we need to do is to control the dynamics of the vocal or of the instrument. The more space between you and another object, the more compression there actually is on it or the less dynamics there actually is on it. The third thing that we need to do is create some sort of spatial uh, uh, content around it, reverb usually, uh, reverb or echo. And the fourth thing is where in the stereo spectrum are we gonna put it and how wide or narrow is it gonna be? So I've got an acoustic guitar pulled up here and basically what I'm gonna do is we're gonna work our way through pushing this guitar away from us in the mix and then we're gonna bring in some other things uh, to help give contrast to the depth. Okay, so here is this acoustic guitar with nothing on it. So that's what it sounds like completely dry just as it was recorded. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to bring in some EQ and we're going to simulate this being further away from us with EQ. Now the further away something is, the more air it has to move through to get to our ears. What people don't really realize is that air is a fluid just like water. And so the longer distance uh, something has to travel, the duller and less dynamic it becomes. So, to simulate this, we're gonna do a couple things. First thing we're gonna do is add a low pass. Second thing we're gonna do is add a high pass. Out some of this 4K. Now already that sounds more distant, so let me bypass this for you. So that already sounds like it's further away because something in this ballpark is what actually happens if that acoustic guitar was being played outside uh, in, in an environment with no reflections 15 feet away from me. This is in the ballpark of what that would actually sound like. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is we need to control some dynamics. Because as sound moves through air, the further it moves through air, the less dynamic it has. Now this is wildly affected by atmospheric pressure and uh, humidity especially has a, has a huge uh, effect on this. But we, So we're gonna pull up a compressor and let's dial in some compression to just reduce the dynamic range a little bit. Now I've got this fab filter, I use the fab filter EQ and the fab filter compressor. And uh, I've got this on the fastest attack and the fastest release because I don't want any character in the compression. I want the compression just reducing the dynamic range and that's it. So uh, let's keep working on this a little bit. Turn the 
look ahead on. There we go. Okay, so without uh, EQ and compression, here's what it sounded like dry. With EQ. With compression. Okay, now the next thing is we need to decide what sort of space do we want it in. Now I, I kind of split up reverbs in, in basically two categories. There are the authentic, realistic, spatial reverbs, and there are the effect reverbs. So over here on the effect side, you've got like rooms, or uh, you've got like spring reverbs and plate reverbs, that kind of stuff. And then on the other side, you've got things that are more realistic and meant to simulate an actual physical space, whether that's a room or a hall or a cathedral or a chamber, uh, and you can certainly choose whichever of those fits best for your track and for the goal that you're after. But the reverb that I'm going to use is this smart reverb, uh, and I find this reverb fascinating. I'll put links in the description below for all of these plugins. Uh, if you're interested in any of the gear that I use, but specifically these plugins, check the links down below. So. The interesting thing about this reverb, uh, one is the fact that it has different characters built into it, and then when you hit this record button, it actually analyzes the track that it's on, and it can give you, it, it kind of automatically adjusts the character of it to be what they think is the best for the source, which is really neat, and I found it to work really well, actually. So let's go ahead and hit this record here, and let's hit play so it can analyze it. Okay, so I'm not gonna do anything else. I'm not gonna change anything else. I've got about a one second uh, reverb time here. It's 100% dry right now. I'm just gonna slowly push it up wet as we work our way through this. Here we go. So it's 100% wet. Hundred percent dry. So then you get to decide how far away you want it. Now there's a couple things that I change here. This width uh, was on a hundred percent. So hear how it doesn't sound like you're. It's getting further away. It just sounds like an effect is on it when we have it a hundred percent wide. I mean, certainly it sounds further away, but I think it sounds much more authentic with this kind of narrow. So let me pull this back down and make this more narrow for you. Here we go. Yeah, that feels really good to me. Now this reverb does a whole bunch of things that are super fast and easy in addition to uh, just being able to dial in a great sounding reverb that easy. Uh, there's this uh, kind of character thing where you've got natural, artificial, rich, and intimate. Let me just swipe this around so you can really hear it. And then at any point, you can grab any one of these parameters, the decay, the spread, and the density, and control all these parameters in addition to like actually having some EQ here and some other stuff. Uh, this is a, I think this is a really good sound reverb. Anyway, links in the description if you want to go check any of these plugins out. The other thing that I've talked about in other videos is contrast between uh, something close. In order for something to sound far away, something else must sound close. So what I want to do is we're just going to play this and I'm just going to bring in the close microphones of the kick and the snare so that way you can kind of hear how when you bring something in that's super close, it makes this sound even further away. So we're just going to, uh, let's see, we're just going to solo a couple of these snare or kick microphones and snare microphones. Here we go. Let me pull this back dry. And 
get rid of these. Now, if your reverb doesn't have a width control on it like this, you can certainly just grab the actual faders uh, and just pull them like, the, or the actual pan knobs and pull them like this, and that will accomplish the same thing. But what I would l encourage you to do is when you're trying to create realistic depth in a mix, is to play that image in your head that, of what you already saw earlier in the video of, of like if it's the same width and it's going further away, that the further away something is, the less wide it is. This is how we hear things. This is, this is how our brain works and perceives sounds. So incorporate some of that into your mixing. Now this is just the principle, these same principles apply on pretty much everything, a vocal, a drum kit, a drum room, an acoustic guitar, a synthesizer, whatever. The, the EQ, you're gonna wanna EQ something similar to this in a way that is the way it would sound if it was far away. You're gonna wanna compress something so that way it is shrinking the dynamic range with, no, with the least amount of pumping from the compressor possible. You're gonna wanna add some great reverb like this, smart reverb, uh, and do it in a way that sounds really natural and blend it in a way that gives you the right amount of space that you're looking for, the space that you would like to place your instrument or vocal in, and then you wanna control either with your plug-in here, the width, or with your actual pan knobs. You wanna control that and make it narrower because the further away something is, the more center it is, the less wide it actually is. I really hope that this helped you. If it did, please share it with your friends. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.